In this video I'm going to show you how to attach a secondary block device, uh, think of it as a hard drive, to uh, an existing Amazon instance. Uh, so by default your Amazon instance will have a single device referred to as a root device and this device stays around as long as the instance is around the moment the instance goes away. Um, the device you know, disappears. So a good way uh, to have another, uh, I mean, persistent storage is to have a second device. And to create that, you go to Volumes, you create the volume. Um, after you have created the volume, you can actually attach it to the instance. That is uh, pretty straightforward, as, as you can see in this video. That has the effect of adding a second drive. You can think of it as, you know, as an external hard drive that you just added to your instance. Um, an important issue with VBSs um, is that they can only be attached to one instance at any given time, like any hard drive. After you have attached um, the drive, it will actually show us a new device in your computer. If you do ls slash dev, you'll see that now uh, you have the original device, which is XVDA, but you also have a, a new device, XVDF. Uh, to use this new device, you have to first format it. You have to do this only the very first time that uh, uh, you create the device. Uh, formatting will delete any data, so make sure that you don't uh, format um, a device that has you know, useful data in it. After you format the device, um, the next thing you have to do is you have to create a mount point. This is a location in your file system. Uh, where the device would be made available. So, uh, slash persistent is one, one possibility you can name a directory in any other way. Uh, you got an error. I got an error here because the directory already existed, uh, but you know, if you create a new directory, you won't get an error. After you do this, you can then actually mount the new drive on uh, this new directory that, that you just uh, created uh, using the mount command. And once you do that, if you type pf, you will see that now uh, you have a new um, mount point that is, you know, goes to, to that device. Uh, a last um, uh, thing you may want to do is uh, you may want to change the permissions on uh, the mount point to make it writable by uh, the Ubuntu user, because um, it was initially created by the root user and it's only writable by the root user. So by changing it to Ubuntu, uh, you get to work with it in an easier way. And here I'm showing you how, you know, once you have made this change, you can actually copy content into this location. Uh, when you want to uh, remove the device, uh, because you're going to destroy uh, the instance, for example, what you should do is you should properly unmount it to make sure that all data is uh, consistently stored in the device uh, using the unmount command. After you unmount um, the device, you can then see that the data won't really be available anymore because the device is no longer mapped. You can map it, of course, again. At that point, you can go to the Amazon console and you can actually ask it to detach uh, the device from um, you know, the EC2 instance that uh, uh, you were using. And once uh, this device gets detached, it can be uh, reattached to uh, a new EBS if, uh, in the future. So the rest of this demo will show you how to actually terminate one of your instances. Um, um, now that we have removed this CDS that has a lot of data that's going to persist between reboots, we can do two things. We can just stop the instance, which uh, will have the effect of um, shutting it down, uh, but will retain the root partition, so that we can actually restart this instance. This is equivalent of taking a regular machine and shutting it down and then restarting it. Uh, if you do it 
that way then you don't have to pay uh, for a runtime that you pay for storage. On the other hand, if you terminate the machine, um, the root device goes, goes away. Uh, the last thing I'm showing you is how you can actually create your own AMI. Uh, this is a simple process. You just select Create AMI, you provide it a unique name, and you say yes. Uh, AMI creation is a lengthy process and it actually requires Amazon to stop your VM. So as you saw in the background, um, the UI disappeared. What happened there is that that server was stopped. And it will take several minutes. And what you're seeing here, if you click on AMIs, you'll see the AMIs that you have. And you know, it will, you know, in this case it's showing that it's pending because it's being generated. 